Hello, everybody. Welcome to another edition of the Make Code Arcade Advanced Stream. I'm Richard at Richard on the Make Code Forum. I'm Thomas at Sparks on the Make Code Forum. And today we are back working on our roguelike game. But before we get started, I will mention real quick, and I'll probably say this at the end too, we have a game jam coming up, and that is a capital G, capital J game jam, not a mini game jam. Um, so I will be posting about this on the forum later today, hopefully, and um, uh, we will actually be picking winners for this one. So there will be no mini game jam next month. Instead, we're doing a game jam for the whole month. Um, look forward to that. We're not going to tell you what the theme is, though, until it starts, because we don't want people starting early. It's cheating. So, except I know what the theme is, so maybe I will. Um, all right, so today we are working on our roguelike game. Um, and uh, last time we were doing combat. So we have these little uh, swords down here. And um, as you walk around, you can now bump into enemies. And as long as you have a sword left, um, you will, oh, whoops, we also did that. Uh -huh. It looks really good. I'm glad we did that. Yeah. Yeah. And that text looks great. Oh, we didn't do the reset. Oh, we didn't do it to reset. Oops. Yeah. Okay. We'll, we'll add code for that. All right. But anyway, so I'm going to run into this guy. Um, and I destroyed him because I had swords left. And so we were thinking of doing this kind of like Breath of the Wild. So you pick up weapons. And when you pick up a weapon, it becomes your new weapon. And it gives you however much durability left. And this is basically the durability. So I was drawing a weapon, um, this thing, which, um, as I was just informing Thomas, um, is a weapon that has never actually existed, um, which is one of those ball, spiky balls on a chain things. Do you know where the concept came from? It's just like I... some fiction fantasy story. I looked it up at some point. No, it's it's it is like a long-standing thing that people have depicted people using these things. There's just like no record of them ever actually existing. Mm -hmm. Um, and I remember a long time ago reading some origin on it or something, but um, I don't remember what it was. So let's do some research, I guess. It's probably when I was watching that terrible blacksmith show on the History Network. Was it a terrible show or a terrible blacksmith on a good show? Uh, a terrible show. Oh, bummer. Terrible it's... blacksmith on a good show sounds like it could be kind of fun. Mm, true, true, true. Um, okay. There you go. Actually, that came out pretty well, spikes-wise. Mm -hmm. Um. Cool. OK, so here's yeah, the first weapon that we're going to have it was like when I came up with the idea of drawing all these things today, I was like, there's one I definitely know I'm drawing and it's the spiky ball on a chain thing. Um, and I mean, it kind of makes sense that this was never actually a weapon, right? I feel like it wouldn't work well. It does seem like it'll be quite a challenge to, like, to actually wield effectively. Yes, like if you swing it around, I feel like that ball has to be so heavy. It's going to be like trying to pull itself out of your hand. And yeah. it seems like very possible that you would be going like that, <laughs> like this, and then you move a little bit too close to your head and just like, bam, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. Why this thing never existed. All right, I got to put in the end text. So I'm gonna I'm just going to bake the text into the image on this. Um, and we're going to do um, a few other ones right now. Um, I, the reason I started this one was because um, I knew this was going to be the hardest one to draw, and so I wanted to do it before stream, so we didn't spend the entirety of stream doing art. But we are going to be doing a lot of art today. So, Thomas, no pressure at all, but do you want to try drawing one? Be anything. You can make it the simplest thing in the world. A weapon? Yeah. Are these weapons? I mean, I can. Are these weapons gonna tr gonna behave differently to each other? Or um, yeah, I mean, you know, the world's our oyster. We can come up with like that. Right now, I was just playing on giving them all like a, a durability value, and then just kind of like going from there. I see. So I probably shouldn't draw a bow and arrow because that would be a whole other mechanic. No, you could. Sure, go for it. Um, 
we're we're playing fast and loose here. I mean, yeah. Uh, see, so anyway, I'll, I'll have to do a little research on on weaponry. Yeah, go for it. Um, and uh, we're doing the image should be uh, sixty four by sixty four, and you know you can use as much space as that as you want. Okay. All right. <clears throat> And I'm just going to call this thing Spiky Ball. Because I don't remember what the name actually is. I think uh, I was I said Morning Star before, and I think Morning Star is actually like a real thing. And it has just that that name has also been given yeah. to this thing. I think people call it a flail a lot of the time. A flail is a real thing, too, though. Oh. Then I don't think okay. is it, isn't it? Yeah, the expert. No, no, you're right. You're right. That's this thing. Picture. Look like that's uh. What? No, just that picture of the two two, uh, jewelers trying using flails at each other looked quite um, quite dramatic. Again, a thing that probably never happened, because um, these are these are not a real thing. Maybe maybe there was a flail of of some design, but it was not a spiky ball on a chain. Um, all right, there we go. Okay, so here's our first one, spiky ball. Uh, I'm gonna make another one now. Um, I think I'm gonna do nunchaku. Um, because why not? Maybe I'll just do wooden stick. Sure. Are you gonna do like? Donatello wooden stick or like one with just like a stick from a tree? Just like a stick from a tree that you found in a dungeon. I don't know how it got there. Sure. Probably well, a, whole, a whole backstory there, I'm sure. But mm -hmm. the life of that stick. Oh, if we could only see it. <laughs> um all right. Nunchucks are easy to draw. I think I'm going to do one of the four segment ones. There's a black background, white outline. Yeah, not transparent background. Uh, it, you know, it, mine's transparent background. Oh. Um, so oh. I'll, I'll just make sure it's outlined with white and oh. um, shift one is the keyboard shortcut for that. Gotcha, thanks. One of the many hidden keyboard shortcuts for the image editor. Which we added after having the, the reason we added that was because we used to um, do a lot of collaborative art streams where whoever was coding would be coding and then they would be like, mm, I need this. And then everyone would complain and then finally be like, OK, yeah, no, fine, I'll make you one. Um, and uh, um, so often we would start the art style of a game with no outline and then decide later, you know what? No, we're going to outline all the sprites now because it's not working against this background. Um, and so we made that keyboard cheat shortcut just to make our lives easier. There you go. Yep. And I still appreciate it. It's pretty great. All right, so for anyone who somehow does not know what nunchaku are, um, it's a it's just a bunch of sticks connected together. It's like a fairly apt description. Yeah, they're like jointed, basically. And as far as I know, these were a real thing. So I don't really know what. It's hard. This is another one that's kind of hard for me to imagine someone using seriously. <laughs> Despite the number of times I've seen it depicted in various martial arts movies. Mm -hmm. Or the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Once you see it in uh, like martial arts competitions nowadays, right? I think they come up sometimes. Yeah, but can you can you trust it? You know, 
it's been so pervasive yeah. in the culture that it's like that's true okay i'm giving these guys a little joints like that I think I need to make this last one thicker. No good. Do it by hand. Go. And do an outline. Again, shift one outlines in white. Um, so if you do shift plus any number, it will outline in the color corresponding to that color. And I happen to know that, I'm sorry, the color having to correspond to that number. Um, and I happen to know that the number for white is one. So, since, but you can find that out just by mousing over on the um, palette. Yeah, I didn't know about that. It's nifty. Nice little feature. Mm -mm. I don't know how I feel about these little things I did. Oh, it's kind of long. looking better than my stick. I really uh, did not put much, put much effort into these nunchucks, to be honest. They, um, they don't look amazing, but uh, they're fine. And they will have the, the, the words, well, the word nunchaku next to them, which will um, clue people in. Yeah, the way to cheat is to just put the word on there, just like in Pictionary. <laughs> Gosh. So, um, uh, breakfast has the thing he really likes to do, where when there is a bird present. Um, so I, I have a bird feeder, um, stuck to my window. It's like a suction cup deal. Um, and I got it for breakfast in auto because I was like, oh, they love birds so much. I'm just gonna have this thing for them to stare at. Um, and uh, breakfast likes to do this thing where when there is a bird on there. He will just throw himself at the window, oh. um, like trying to, trying to jump Sounds... upwards. Yeah, um, and I'm not I'm not worried about him hurting himself or anything. He's fine. Um, like he seems aware that the window exists. Um, but uh, um, there are blinds up against the the window, and he causes them to rattle all around, and it scares the heck out of Otto. He freaks out every time. <laughs> Mm. My cats would love a bird feeder. I'm thinking about trying to get them one. Last year, I feel like it was more popular with the birds, but. And I had fun. Um, I, I got like a bird identification book and I was like identifying all of the birds that came by. And yeah, you know, there's not a ton of different ones, but <laughs> I can now tell you what a sparrow looks like versus a finch versus a junco. So there you go. OK, um, let's see. Spike ball, nunchaku. Um, I, I guess I'll do a sword and um, then we'll get started with the coding of this. Um, sure. And for sword, I'm, I, you know, I'm not one of those medieval 
weapons people. I don't really know what it is versus the other thing. Though I do know all the names because of Final Fantasy. Um, but um, doing like a double-edged Claymore type deal. It is kind of funny when I watch that um, blacksmith show and they start making various weapons and I'm like, oh, yeah, like in Final Fantasy Tactics Advance. <laughs> um, yeah. Great game, by the way. I'm sure you'll be shocked to hear that I hadn't played it. Yeah, you know, that, that one was kind of like, I mean, did you have a Game Boy Advance? I did, actually, yeah. Oh, okay, then you don't have an excuse. Yeah. Okay. What games I played the most of on my Game Boy Advance? Super Mario Bros. 2, was that game? That was Game Boy Advance. Um, yeah, I mean, they. I think they re-released all of the, like, or Mario games on the Game Boy Advance. That's where I played um, Yoshi's Island, which was included in that list despite not really being <laughs> a part of it. But um, amazing game, and worked very well in Game Boy Advance. Nice. Okay, I hate this sword. This is an awful sword. I don't like it one bit. Sorry to hear that. I Why do I hate it? I was very focused on my own stick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no worries. What is it that offends me so much about this sword? I'm trying to put my finger on it. There we go. I think it's a little bit better. The hilt is really bothering me, maybe? looks a little disproportionate to the handle like either the handle should be longer or maybe the hilt should be shorter it's mm. my hot take that does look better Okay, I'm liking the sword now, more now that I did this little handle with like the shading thing. Looks nice. Oh, nice. Yeah. We, um, let's try a thicker outline for this guy. The bleed part of the sword. Yeah. Okay, what if instead of that, I just made it a really thick sword like um you know a buster sword type of deal broad sword type thing okay buster sword yeah it's a broad sword thicker or smaller than a claymore smaller yeah that sounds right buster sword another thing that definitely did not exist um mm -hmm. as much as i wish that it did is a reference to Final Fantasy VII. Um, yeah, this is okay. I'm all right with this. Excuse me, I'm wrapping up my wooden stick as well. And I think I am going to write broadsword for this because, um, you know, people come to stream to watch me write text in pixels. <laughs> My wooden stick text is uh, going to need a little bit of work, I think, but I'm not sure. Maybe if I just made the white outline a little thicker, it would be easier to read. Am 
I don't know. So, did you play any RPGs on the Game Boy Advance? There were a lot of good RPGs on the Game Boy Advance. Um, did I play any RPGs? Hmm. None that are come to mind, actually. Pokemon? Oh, I did play... Was it Fire Red Pokemon? Yep. Um, yeah, and I... Charizard that got me through that entire game. I played it. I got that game in an airport before a six hour flight and just played it the whole six hour flight. And then I think I played it all the way back as well. And that was kind of the extent of my experience uh, with that game. We lived such different lives, Thomas. Yeah, we did. My childhood, I mean, I probably put. Like if you were to draw a chart of how Richard spent his time prior to, let's say, college, like a pie chart, um, mm -hmm. that there would be a very visible chunk that was playing Pokemon games. All right. You know what you like. That's a good thing. I was just bouncing back and forth between all sorts of different games. My heyday for games was just when I was in high school. Yeah, I mean, I, I always played games. I kind of stopped a little bit in college, and then I picked it back up again towards the end of college. I also stopped in college. I made a lot of games in college, but I didn't play many games in college. Yeah. Which kind of bummed me out. I realized, like, towards the end of my college career, I was like, I went, went to a gaming convention, I think, at one point, and I was like, oh, like I'm, I'm not up to date on any of this stuff anymore. Like I felt really out of the loop. All right. Okay, I've sent you my wooden stick. Feel free to adapt as uh, necessary. Will do. All right. Um, I like this sword. It came out pretty well. I hated it, and now, now I'm a fan. Yep. Oh, you want this broadsword in? Yep. Because I think the proportions are more that of a broadsword. I think a claymore is like longer. Mm. I don't know. Anyway, doesn't matter. We're not going for accuracy in our little roguelike game. Oh, I like it. Well, thanks. I'm just making the font consistent. Yeah, just make it consistent. That's probably yeah. a good call. There you go. It's not still not consistent, but it is more so. That is fair. You can also just totally delete it and redo it if you like. Yeah. Not needed. All right. Cool. OK, we got these now. So um, we're going to go ahead and put these into our game. Um, so we're going to make these. We're going to pick these up, and they're going to have like a durability level that we're going to be keeping track of. Um, you can only have one at a time. Um, and uh, so to make this happen, first thing we're going to do is we're going to add a tile for an item. So we're going to make a little treasure chest. Um, and I think for the treasure chest, I'm going to copy the treasure chest from um, the Link's Awakening, Oracle of Ages, Oracle of Seasons, Zelda games, um, which are great games. You should play them if you have Game Boy Color, or if also I think they're in many other formats now. I played them. They did the remake of Link's Awakening, right? I played that one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was fun. 
I did right. have Link's Awakening on one of my older systems as well, but back then I couldn't get past the like very first puzzle thing. It's like an owl in a forest. I've forgotten precisely what was going on, but mm. yeah. Um, did you have like a Game Boy Color? No, I didn't. So I'm trying to, I don't know what I played it on. Uh, you could have played it on Game Boy Advance. It was a um, Game Boy Advance. Could, the, the Game Boy Advance could play. Right, you could plug them in, couldn't you? You could play Game Boy Color games on Game Boy Advance. Yep. And the way it achieved that was not like emulation or anything. It included an entire Game Boy Color inside that Game Boy Advance. Um, oh. Yeah, like they just included the chip and everything. Wow. Um, which, I mean, makes sense. Um, OK, yeah, so here's a treasure chest. Um, let me see, should I die the bottom? No, OK, that's fine. Um, yeah, it doesn't look the most treasure chesty. How does that do? Yeah, that might look better. Oh, All right, so um, let's go ahead and place these in our game. And I think we are going to make these things relatively rare. So we will always put one in the first level, I think. Um, and then after that, there's just going to be a chance that you find one. And when you do, you know, it will be a lucky coincidence. Um, so let's keep track of what level we're on, which we're not even doing right now. Um, so let's go here. Um, I am going to create a variable for this. It's going to be current level. Set it to zero. And inside of our next level function, we are just going to change this by one. Boy, this this game is starting to lag a bit. Oh, I, I, I still have arcade open in another tab that will do it. OK, change current level by one. And um, so we have this little animation that plays when um, we go between levels. Um, it would be cool if we could somehow indicate what level we're on in that little animation. Um, don't know how to do that. But. Yeah, we'll worry about that later. Yeah. All right. OK, so we have two options for this treasure chest thing. Um, we could just make it so it's a really low probability, or we could just literally just do it every five levels or something. So let's let's do that. We're well, let's just we're gonna make it so that like every five levels you have a okay, yeah. Okay. Um, okay, so we're going to do zero. We're going to be using a remainder block this divided by five, grab our current level. And we're going to actually do equals one because um, we start on level one, so we want to check that. Um, and um, inside here, we'll go ahead and make a function. Which will be. Spawn. Treasure. Chest. And we will call that. All right. So when we spawn a treasure chest, um, we are going to um, place it on some unoccupied tile. Um, so hmm, this is actually a thing we're going to have to think about. Um, so right now, where do we spawn our enemies? I think we do it inside of the. Um, like level generation, so inside of anthill, maybe. Do we spawn enemies here? Yeah, we do. So here's where we actually spawn our enemies. Um, and let's look at that function. Upper right. Yes. Um, so here what we're doing is we are choosing a thing 
And then we're setting the position to X, Y. OK, so we've already chosen the tile at this point. Right, OK, so we're going to all the room centers and then we do it that way. Which makes sense. Um, all right, so what I want to make sure we do is that we are spawning our treasure chest, not where an enemy is. Um, I see. So I think probably the easiest way to do that is going to be um, we're just going to mark a tile where we spawn an enemy um, so that that tile is like reserved and we'll clear it afterwards. So um, we're going to set it with this guy, which we were just using for temporary logic anyway. It's not actually used in our game. Um, and then inside of scene, we can get the location of our sprite and change this to be temp sprite and make sure we do it after we set the position, which I'm not doing right now. Mm. Man, I'm sleepy all the time. Do you think it has to do with me staying up really late last night reading Naruto and then um, waking up very it. early? That, you know, that could be it. That's probably it, huh? Yeah. OK, um, let's see. All right, so we're setting this at that location. Um, so now we can actually see it if we move. So now we got those little tiles behind. We don't actually want the user to see those tiles. We just want them to be marked so that when we are selecting a tile to put the thing on, um, we can remove it. And I'm actually wondering if I, I kind of want to make it so the treasure chest always has space around it. So it's not up against the wall. Yeah. So, hey, you know what? Maybe we just make a treasure room instead of doing all this stuff. So the other mm -hmm. option is like you go into a level and you just level with the treasure chest. Then you go to the next one. I see. Yeah, that could work. I mean, you're at that point, you never have the. Yeah, that's probably fine. It's not like I was gonna say you don't have any like, oh, it's challenged to get to this particular treasure chest. But I feel like the way we're generating levels now, that's probably a pretty unlikely scenario anyway. So yeah, we can talk about ways to make it a little bit more interesting later. Um, but maybe we focus on enemy drops for doing things inside of levels or something like that. Um, OK, for my code. So what we're going to do is um right now we have our anthill generation and our maze generation where are you maze here we go and um let's get our next level function also that we just had beautiful and um in here we are going to um take this check right here and oh, whoa, whoa, I just messed stuff up. OK, undo. Redo, there we go. All right, um, so I'm going to pull this guy out. Um, and we're going to put in the else, put that right there. And we're going to put all of this stuff. Inside of the else, we don't want to spawn traps. Um, yeah. And here we are going to um, do a um, special room of some kind. And for now, we're just going to be doing treasure rooms, but I can imagine we could do a shop or something in the future, you know? Yep. Um, so that you can kind of like unlock stuff. That'll make more sense once we have more items, but for now, uh, this will work just fine. Yeah. Okay. Where did I put my spawn treasure chests? Yeah, I got to stop moving these functions out of the way. Um, I'm going to rename all these functions, and it's going to be um, gin ant hill generate ant hill room. It's like abbreviating it when there was no reason for me to do that. Generate me's room. Generate treasure room. OK, now for a treasure room, 
um, I think what we're going to do is we're just going to make a room that has um, walls around it. There's a treasure chest in the middle, and um, we have a um, stair on one side, stair on another side. Now, what's going to annoy the heck out of me is the fact that we have a 20 tile width, so we cannot actually place it in the middle. Um, mm. But there's nothing we can do about that, so we just have to accept it and move on. Okay, this will be a uh, challenge, but I believe in us. The only thing I could suggest we do is we make a big treasure chest instead of the little one, and we just do it um, four by four. Three, oh, four by Oh, yeah. Two by two. Or two by Sorry. two. Yeah. Yeah. Two by two. Um, that would be a very enormous treasure chest compared to our little creature. Yeah, but you know. Yeah. I mean, it's a big know. treasure. Special. Yeah, it's a big um, okay. So to do this, um, we are going to uh, do. Let's see. I'm going to go to our generate anthill room and grab the bit that draws the outlines for the room is this bit. This is drawing the border. <laughs> that in there. Except we probably want to make it a little bit thicker, but for now, there you go. We want to put um, some more rows here on the bottom. So we'll do that. Um, wait, no, that's the wrong one. This is the one I want. And do row 13. It looks like our player's in the center of the screen there. Oh, uh, yeah, it's just where you start, but you're not on a tile. Yeah, exactly. Um, it's because we, we haven't put in uh, the stairs. So you could do it vertically. It looks like the center vertically exists. Oh, never mind. That doesn't help. It's still yeah, the it center horizontally. <laughs> Um, OK, here, let's let's draw a treasure chest um, and I will cheat and copy the treasure chest. Nope, keeping me honest game that's in the tiles section. So instead, we are going to draw a treasure chest. So luckily, treasure chests are very easy to draw. Good treasure chests are hard to draw, but. Um, What's that saying? Perfect's the enemy of the good? Perfect's the enemy of good enough or something like that. Whoops. Pretty convincing trade chest to me. No, stop it. Stop it, stop it, stop it. Stop it. Oh, I had the line tool selected. That's why I was being weird. OK. Let's do that. Hmm. Should I make the top white, too? Mm. Yes. Yeah. See what it looks like. Maybe the top should be white and the bottom should be. That looks better, I think. Yeah. All right, there we go. We're going to um, make this treasure chest and we're going to place it in the middle of this room. Um, so just go ahead and do that right here. And um, we're going to set all four tiles that are underneath it to be um, just some tile that we can detect if we're bumping into or not. Um, so, um, let's do that. We're going to, um, I guess first let's put in our tiles that we need. Um, so we're going to go into scene and we're just going to hard code the locations of these guys. Do set. Uh, I forget which one was the entrance. I think that's the entrance. Nope. This one is. Nope. You just picked. 
Oh, yeah. I, did I pick the same one again? I think you did, yeah. Oh, okay. There you go. Yeah, there cool. Go. So now, our, now our players up there. Nice. Um, all right. Uh, so we're just going to set this to be um, column two row. Let's see, 15 is how big it is, but we, have, we subtract two, so it's actually 13. So we want to do six. Yeah. Maybe column. Yeah, that works. You know what? Let's put them down here, I think, because then we'll have this be in the upper part of the room, and you'll you can just like you know. Mm, if you don't it. want it. Yeah. Yeah. If you're if you if you for some reason don't want it, which is a, a possible, I guess. Yeah. Um, okay, so we'll make this row ten. Put you like pretty far down. There you go. Um, and we will set this other one at um, so we're 20 wide minus two is um, 18. Well, but we want to do minus one, so 17. There we go. Okay. So our game works again. We can just run over here and go to the next level. And the treasure chest never goes away, but that's fine. Um, so we're just going to give this a kind of um, what's something that I know gets cleaned up. Pretty sure following gets cleaned up. No, it doesn't. And me? Bomb text does. Wait, bomb text gets cleared up every time we move. Oh, it also makes it and flash. flashes. <laughs> okay. Um, Enemies would get cleaned up, right? Sure, 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 sure. Enemy will get cleaned up, so we'll do that. Um, all right, cool. Um, and this guy is currently not aligned, so we need to align him. Um, it's aligned horizontally. It's not aligned vertically. Um, so we're going to change my sprite. Oh, let's make this temp sprite. All right, minus uh, four is what we have to do, but you know, let's let's move up more than that. We'll do minus twelve. Um, so there we go. We should be aligned now. I'm just gonna walk over to make sure that's the case. Yep. Um, and um, I kind of want this room to be, you know, should I just hard code? Is there a reason I'm drawing this all programmatically? I realize now. Like the walls? Oh, right. You can just do this, can't you? Yep. I was like, I kind of want this room to look a specific way. And then um, it's like, oh, yeah, there's an easy way for me to make that happen. And that is to just <laughs> use our tile map editor. Yeah, that's a thing. Yep. Uh, there we go. I want it to be kind of like a room you walk into. It's the thing. Um, and then, oh, no, it's this one. And this one. And then we'll put the treasure chest up here. Is this, this is not right. This is three wide. So you could have used the one, pick one, the tile for your treasure chest. I guess this room will be centered. True. And no one would have known. I would have known. <laughs> um, there we go. And um, we're going to uh, make a, oh, no, no, we already have a treasure chest tile. We'll just keep using that. So we're just going to, uh, we'll put it up there. And um, yeah, all right, cool. I feel like those stairs are backwards, but I could be mistaken. Yeah, you, you might be right. I don't know. Yeah, figure it out. There you go. Okay, <laughs> we're just going to do this. Pull that out. Yep. <laughs> Um, cool. So we're going to go ahead and uh, grab our, still create this sprite that we're going to be placing on top of these tiles. Um, and we're going to change the Y 
by more now. Looks like we need to move up three tiles, so that'll be 24. So we want to do minus 36. Da -da. Nice. Okay, so there we go. Got the treasure chest. Um, we're going to do this now, and we are going to write some code for when you walk onto this. Um, we'll probably make this a wall, actually. Um, we need to make a lot of walls. So let's go ahead and grab the wall tool and do boop, boop, like that. Um, and um, when you walk into this wall, um, we will do a check inside of our move function, and then we will like do the actual logic of like you got the treasure chest, and we'll replace the image with a treasure chest that is open, um, which will just be, by the way, let me give this a, a background because there are tiles underneath it. Just the same thing with the top gone. Or maybe like that. I don't know. Yeah, I'm just going to get rid of the top altogether. You could. Uh, I said you could make the closed one all black and have the top be one of white when it's open. We can also just get rid of it, I guess. Let's just get rid of it. No, just to so make my life easier. Um, all right, so we're going to go into our move function, move player. Cool. If tile at temp location is wall. So right now we just do a return. Um, so we're going to check uh, inside here if that tile is. and make it our chest tile. There we go. So if that's the case, we're going to call another function, which will be open treasure chest. Call that. All right. Whoa, did I, um, oh, I accidentally dragged all of that code that I had just put on the workspace into this open treasure chest function. <laughs> Get out of here. All right. Um, so if this happens, we're going to destroy our chest. So I'm going to go ahead and call um, destroy all sprites of kind. And we made it kind enemy for some reason. Um, and uh, we're going to also get rid of all of our tiles. Um, so I'm going to do replace all um, and replace all chest tiles with transparency. And um, we also need to um, clear the wall that's on it. Um, so we're going to, um, I guess before we do the clear, we'll just loop over and turn off walls on all of them. This is a, this is a thing I, I ask. So we need to add to the um, tile util extension. Um, but I just keep forgetting to do it. And it's, it's, I, I don't even have to, sh uh, to ship an update to do that. I can just do it. But I just always forget. <laughs> it may take me like 10 minutes. You're just saying like a clear walls on tile of kind thing? Block. Just or, you know, set wall on off for all tiles of you know okay, that image. Yeah. yeah okay. Handy. Okay. So now um, nothing's going to happen except we will get rid of the chest. So boop, we got a treasure chest. Um, okay. So um, we're going to uh, do another function now, and um, this one's going to be um, award item. And um, I'm doing this as a separate function because we might, down the line, make other things happen when you do a treasure chest. I don't know. No, maybe we won't, actually. You kind of just always just get a thing from a treasure chest, unless we do, like, mimics. Yeah, I don't think we're right. going to do it. Doesn't, doesn't um, quite work with our current combat mechanics. I guess you just lose yeah. a sword instead of uh, gaining one. Mm -hmm. Or die, which would be sad. True. 
Um, OK, so um, what we're going to do is um, let me grab all those things I had. Here you go. All of our weapons you could possibly get. And we're going to go into functions um, and we're going to make a new function. It's going to be called um, make equipment. I don't like writing the word weapon, so. Mm -hmm. Uh, and this is going to take in um, an image, um, a string that we might not do anything with, which will be the name, um, and a number, which will be the durability. There you go. All right. Um, so for this, we're going to be creating a sprite. Um, and uh, we're just doing that really to um, store properties on it because I don't want to add block objects to this project because I hate that extension that I wrote. Um, and uh, we're going to be setting um, this data on it. So let's make this temp sprite. We're going to do um, put in the image here. We're going to make a kind for this, which will be um, item. And um, we're going to make temp sprite store the name. And we're going to store the durability. Where am I in functions? Sprites. Temp sprite. Go ahead and put in our number. All right, cool. Um, so um, inside of here, we are now going to choose one of these from a list. And so we're going to basically um, do a random number check. So um, I'm going to do, hmm, hmm. Do I want to make it so that there's also a um, probability of each one? Um, I mean, might be nice. Rarity. Rarity. Um, OK, so we'll do that. Um, so for each one, we're going to make a rarity. And we're just going to make a list of these guys. Um, and I'm going to uh, make these all invisible. Because we don't actually want them to show on the screen right now. Um, we will show them when you're getting the item. But um, for now, we just want them to kind of hide in the background in an array. Okay, visible, not relative to camera, visible, on. OK, cool. Um, so now over and on start. We're going to go into arrays. Grab this, make this new variable, all equipment. And now here's the fun part where we get to decide how rare everything is and what their stats are. Um, so let's go ahead and put this inside, just up here at the top, I guess. Um, and we're going to call that function we made. So, oh, make equipment needs to return something. All right. I call make equipment four times, which just happens to be the point at which it goes vertical, which is convenient for us. Um, and I'm going to stick these guys into here so that I can just drag these out. All right. All right. So the first one is the spiky ball. 
Then we have the Dunjaku. We're going to have the Broad Sword. That's not how you spell sword. Sword. Um, and then the Wooden. I'm just going to call it stick. Yeah. Um, OK, so the first number is the durability. And I think um, I, I'm pretty sure we all know stick is going to be the lowest durability. Stick is one. You get to hit one thing with the stick. Yeah. Um, then I think next lowest is going to be spiky ball. I just can't imagine that thing holding up very long. <laughs> That's um, a very strong chain. Yeah, and then for nunchaku, we will do three. And for broadsword, we will do four. Um, now the for rare sword, we have. How is this going to get represented? Sorry, uh, off topic. Don't worry about it. Okay. Um, now we're going to do the rarity. Um, and for rarity, what we're going to be doing is supplying a number. Um, and we're not going to be doing percent chance because percent chance is annoying because then you have to, whenever you change the percent chance, something you have to update it on everything else. Um, so instead, we'll do the uh, Kind of like the inverse, but not really. Um, basically, we're going to give them all a number. The higher number is how common it is. So perhaps, you know, common would be a better word than rarity. And um, what we do is we pick a random number between zero and the sum of all those numbers. And then we find out which one, like, we are yeah, less than. Stack them up. Yeah, exactly. And you, you just choose where you hit. And that'll be the one that we actually pick. But we're out of time for today. So we'll do that um, on um, Wednesday after we um, do the mini game jam stream. So um, mini game jam ends today. Get your games in, and we will be playing those games on Wednesday. So you know, keep an eye out for that. And like I said earlier, um, we will be announcing the game jam this week. Um, not the theme, but we will be giving you the dates and all that stuff. So look for that on the forum. I am Richard, Everett from the Make Code Forum. I'm Thomas and Sparks on the Make Code Forum. And I'm Joey at J Wonder on the Make Code Forum. <laughs> um. And uh, we'll see you all later. Bye.